Welcome to today's technical seminar. My name is Brian Lopez. I'm the local bridge consultant for Contact Engineered Solutions. Thanks for joining me today. Look forward to hopefully meeting you. If I haven't had a chance to do so, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. A quick overview of today's agenda. I want to talk through a little bit of Contact Solutions on the bridge side. Um, give you guys at least a, just a quick introduction of who we are, if you're unfamiliar with us talk through foundation and scour, and then walk through a few local applications as well as some national applications, and then how do we partner together? How do we work together on projects? As a bridge consultant, uh, we look at everything from concept through installation, from solution development to design, all the way into the installation phase where we're, we're on site, we're there working with contractors and owners to make sure we have a successful project. So our goal is to provide options and support to you and to your project needs. Contact's been around for well over 100 years. Um, when, when we look at a project, we are a complete site solution company. So everything from the, the pipe and stormwater side of things, underground detention, stormwater quality units, um, looking at various uh, stormwater quality systems, uh, the jellyfish, the um, hydrodynamic separators, and then everything that you're going to see in the middle here is what we on the bridge side cover. So our precast, our plate, our truss and girder systems, as well as what I call our complementary systems, our hard armor systems, as well as some of our, our retaining wall systems. As bridge consultants, we want to be your project partner. Uh, there are about 60 PEs on staff that support myself. And then obviously you alongside your projects, um, everything with our plate, our precast, and our truss and girder systems, offering options and support to you and to your specific projects. I usually get the question of where do your bridges come from? Uh, well, it, it depends. Uh, definitely depends on the project, the, the product, the solution that we're, we're trying to provide and trying to discuss and design. Um, as well as timing and scheduling, uh, what's going to be best for the project. So our plate, our precast, and our, our truss systems, our girder systems um, come from all over the country. Um, here in Texas, uh, we pull from various plants, depending on those schedules, um, best serving the, the project um, from a cost standpoint. Some of these uh, brands that Contec has, you might be familiar with, uh, whether it's multi-plates, conspans, continental bridges, maybe the Big R Bridge. Uh, we've, we've seen some acquisitions through the years I mentioned, um, and I'll discuss that here in a little bit, but um, I want to provide those, those brands to you. Um, so if you are familiar with them, great. If not, I want to introduce them to you so that you um, can utilize them, I guess, as you're working through your projects and try to figure out what's the best option for you. So to start kind of on a, on a ground level, I want to start with just the basics of two concepts that you're probably very familiar with. One that you might not be familiar with either at all or maybe just a little bit. Uh, one that you're familiar with is obviously the culvert. Um, so the culvert is going to be your round or box culvert system, whether it's uh, concrete, it's corrugated metal pipe, it's plastic, it's going to be buried. Um, so you're going to be backfilling the structure, compacting that fill, paving on top of that. And that can be a lot of different options. The other option that you can to consider is your bridge of grade that you might be familiar with. Abutments, straight bridge across, girder system, uh, whether it's steel, concrete, um, that's your typical traditional bridge. The one in the middle, which I'm going to focus on today, your buried bridge. This one you might not be familiar with at all, um, or you might be very familiar with. But the buried bridge portion um, is one that it's a it's a buried bridge. So to simply define that. Um, you have a, a bridge uh, with a foundation system. It's either got deep or shallow foundations, and then you're burying it. So it's a three-sided open bottom system that you're backfilling, whether it's your plate or your precast arch system. So Context Solutions uh, with the culverts, the buried bridges, and the bridges at grade, uh, we cover all of those. So our, our culverts, um, are typically are going to be our, our pipe solutions, our corrugated metal pipe. Some of that bleeds over a little bit into our plate systems, 
Um, but the buried bridge systems are going to be your plate and your precast systems spanning anywhere from a clear span of five feet to just over 100 linear feet in clear span. And then your bridges at grade, your, your Continental Steadfast, your Big R, um, your girder or your truss system. Uh, vehicular can span um, up to 200, pushing the limits on that. And then your pedestrian bridges typically are well over 300 linear foot in clear span. All of these bridge systems um, fall into a category we'll call accelerated bridge construction. FHWA has dubbed this uh, accelerated bridge construction. Federal Highway Administration, FHWA, has instituted what they've called Accelerated Bridge Program. A bridge program, um, their goal is to uh, use innovative means and methods addressing our nation's infrastructure needs. And one thing they've done is to implement this Accelerated Bridge construction. And the goal of ABC is to reduce on-site construction time by building bridges or structural components, elements, and systems, building them off-site um, and trying to reduce as much as you can on-site construction time, really reducing the, the safety factors, the safety risks that might be at play when you have a, a very long construction lead time. About 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, FHWA put out a document called Connection Details for Prefabricated Bridge Elements and Systems. And in that document, um, they spelled out what they would like these systems and elements to look like. Um, they called out the Conspan Bridge System in one of their pages. Uh, it's our bridge system, our precast bridge system. Um, I just want to read to you an excerpt of, of what that really means to them. Um, it's prefabricated elements of a bridge produced off-site that can be assembled quickly and can reduce design time and costs, minimizing forming, minimize lane closure time, and or possibly eliminate the need for a temporary bridge. They're looking for cost savings, reducing maintenance, and reducing um, any safety factors, any safety risks. Uh, an update to this, uh, FHWA, if you're unfamiliar, just over, I guess right at a year ago, um, back in October of 2019, FHWA has repealed a ruling that had been in effect for decades, about 100 years, um, giving the, the DOTs, the state DOTs, flexibility to use patented and proprietary products. Um, basically, this just allows the DOTs some autonomy, some, um, I guess, avoiding red tape, if you will, um, allowing them to, to reference single trade names um, in their materials. So this is obviously very important to us as a contact, um, but with regards to all materials and, and all systems and elements, especially on the bridge side, um, DOTs have the, um, I guess, the autonomy and the authority to now do um, as they please, if you will, on federal aid projects. So how does TxDOT feel? Um, well, TxDOT was one of the DOTs that had commented on um, this ruling in favor of this ruling. They concur with option two, providing innovation, um, hopefully potentially reducing some costs, um, looking at cost-effective measures, again, innovation, better products, um, looking at improving safety and hopefully some cost benefits for them. So, where, do, where does contact fit in this? Well, it's, it starts with, with you as a client, with you, um, with us collaborating um, on a project and trying to figure out what is the best solution. Um, is it a contact solution? Is it a standard traditional text dot box or a, a bridge? Um, and it's collaborating together on the design side, working through manufacturing in a, in a quality controlled manufacturing facility. And then getting to the site where we're providing that accelerator bridge process with freight economy, with installation and assembly assistance, as well as um, just looking at the backfill process and how do we provide the contractor, the owner, the engineer 
um, the most support that we can to accelerate that construction process and have an efficient and successful project. So I want to take a step back and look at the just a just a quick example of um, maybe what to do. Um, you've got a creek crossing. Um, what do you use? How do you do it? Um, what's the best option? So for you as a, as a designer, um, if you're whether you're a civil engineer, structural engineer, um, hydraulic engineer, an architect, landscape architect, you're you're looking at this and trying to figure out um, what do you do? Um, you you want to get traffic from one side to another and you've got this creek to cross, you've got a stream to cross, and maybe you can impact it, maybe you can't. So what are your options? You can go traditional uh, traditional pipe, uh, multi-cell pipe, multi-cell boxes, um, or maybe um, you wanna look at just uh, if you can impact this completely, um, a round system. So that could be pipe or it could be plate. In this case, you've got a, a almost 22 foot span that you wanna span across because your, your bank full width is 14 linear feet. Um, so you got to span across that somehow, and maybe you have to impact that. Or staying in line with plate, you clear span that because you want to avoid wetlands, you want to avoid streams. And so you clear span that with a three-sided um, open bottom system, or you utilize precast if plate is not a good option. Um, the last option might be just a traditional bridge, whether it's a girder or a truss system. So I wanna, I wanna break it down for you, I guess, in, in two categories, your buried bridge solutions as well as your bridges and grade solutions. Um, hopefully those two categories will help, uh, I guess, identify what's what to use when um, and why one over the other. So to start, buried bridge options. Um, so the buried bridge options, the plate and the precast, and the start is your plate systems. So. Most everyone I ask when I say, are you familiar with plate? Um, they say, I'm familiar with pipe. Well, if you're familiar with pipe, that's, that's a good start. Um, corrugated metal pipe has been around for a very long time. That's actually how Contech started, um, was a corrugated metal pipe company manufacturing corrugated metal pipe. So doing that made a lot of sense for us to get into larger structures, which led us into structural plate. It's rolled steel or aluminum that we've rolled out into various plate shapes to get us um, what you're seeing here in these photos. So if you're steel or aluminum, um, it definitely depends on the application. Um, so sometimes it's live, larger live loads or larger grade separations to utilize steel, or you're looking at more of a durability question and, and increasing durability, utilizing aluminum, maybe it's along the coast. Um, definitely depends on the application as to which one you're gonna utilize. The key takeaway with plate is versatility. So that comes in looking at a typical structure being delivered on one truck on that top left photo, um, all the way through the assembly, the efficiencies in assembly, um, and then installation. And that bottom right picture is, is one bridge that came on that one truck designed for HL93 or whatever your design load is needed to be. So some of that versatility comes in the variety of end treatments that are, are available. So from um, concrete headwalls, aluminum headwalls that we've developed, providing some cost-effective solutions and even eliminating headwalls if necessary uh, with your beveled ends and your step beveled ends. When considering structural plate, there are three environmental factors that really need to be defined in order to choose the right material, and that's pH, your resistivity or your hardness. So with pH, is, is the environment basic? Is it acidic? Resistivity is, is the water and the soil, um, its, its ability to conduct electricity, very important. Um, with hardness, you're looking at, um, is there a presence of dissolved salts in the surrounding soils and water? So these three factors are really informative for, for us, uh, providing you the best solution um, in terms of, do we need an open bottom system? Is there abrasion? Um, what's that abrasion level? Um, and if we have an open bottom system, what does that soil side look like? What does the water side look like? Providing you with the best structure utilizing either steel or aluminum helps us determine some of those things. So taking a closer look at the, the galvanized steel. Steel has been around, galvanized steel structural plate's been around since the early 1930s. 
NCSPA, the National Corrugated Steel Pipe Association, has put a calculator on their website. It's accessible through ncspa.org. Um, TxDOT also has a link to it on their website. Um, that service life calculator helps determine the gauge or the thickness of the material based on your desired service life. So if you only need a 50-year service life, this helps us determine those things based on pH, resistivity, hardness, as well as is it an open bottom system? So are we dealing with a three-sided structure? Is it a buried bridge? And if so, that dramatically increases the service life. So one thing with galvanized steel is that there's 50% more galvanized coating than there is on your typical corrugated metal pipe. Um, that again, adds to that in increased service life. Um, the additional coatings you can add to it, such as um, asphalt coating, has about 10 years of service life, but we look at Caltrans, ASI, NCSPA. These are um, agencies and organizations that help define that design life and what you need for that design life um, in terms of your structural plate. I mentioned using structures without inverts to eliminate the potential for invert wear or abrasion. Our bridge core, our galvanized steel structural plate system, allows you to clear span, clear span streams and wetlands up to 80 feet. Um, this utilizes a deeper corrugation that's nine times stiffer than your traditional conventional corrugated steel plates. So these longer spans can help accomplish two goals. They provide enhanced durability by eliminating the invert, um, and you can avoid or minimize your wetland impacts. So steel and aluminum both have different corrugations. The bridge core system is your 15 by five and a half corrugation, multi-plates your six by two, and then your aluminum is a nine by two and a half corrugation. These all um, are determined based on what your application is. Um, but structural plate, again, different than CMP, is in the gauge, your thickness. So if you look at this chart, your CMP gauges end right around 14 or, or even they stop, maybe they can get up to, to 12, maybe 10 gauge, um, but your structural plate starts at 12 gauge and 10 gauge. Um, that's the beginning of how thick we are. Uh, we get into um, typically a lot of our aggregate tunnels, which you're seeing on that far right. Um, we'll get into typically your one gauge system. So these are extremely thick materials. Um, and on top of that, you have your added galvanized galvanization, 50% uh, more than your corrugated metal pipe. Aluminum structural plate has been in use since the 1960s. Aluminum structural plate offers enhanced durability since it's made of pure aluminum instead of an alloy. And studies have shown that the plate pit rate can conservatively be estimated at one mil per year. So when you take a, a 0.1 inch thick plate, it can be expected to have at least a 100 year design life. That's significant when talking to some cities only require a 50 year design life out of some of their, their concrete or even their other corrugated metal structures. The picture on the left shows uh, one of our aluminum structural plates that's been in, installed and in, in use since the 1960s um, in a saltwater environment that has seen um, high tides, fully submerged during high tides, um, doing some research utilizing this aluminum and, and discussing durability with this. Um, but to date, um, there has been no metal loss in this structure. This is an example of a project that we did up in the Pennsylvania area with Jacobs Engineering. Uh, this was a Norfolk Southern Railway. They did not want to shut down the lines. They had seven stone arches that dated um, about 150 years old. Um, so when, when designing this was more of a reline than new construction. So utilizing our bridge core bridge systems or deep corrugation systems, designing for Cooper E80 loading. Uh, we wanted to extend the service life of this, of these stone arches by at least another 75 years. So uh, we slip lined our bridge core system ring by ring, installed those, grabbed the annulus, um, and provided Norfolk Southern with a, an extended service life of 75 years for their bridges while not shutting down the lines at all, not for one day. So that was our, our plate system. Again, one of our buried bridge options. The others are precast. So either our conspan that you see on the left or our bebos that you see on the right. 
Uh, our ConSpan systems, our ConSpan O series for optimized series, um, are typically utilized, whether it's in grade separation, as shown on the top left, um, or the two on the right are gonna be your wetlands, your stream crossings, or even the bottom left, which is your larger stream crossings into a multi-cell configuration. The ConSpan has an arched top with straight legs that we've flared out for hydraulically, hydraulically efficient structures. And then the Bebo is more of a pure arch system. So thinking Roman arch styles, uh, where you need a, a larger grade separation, a taller clearance box, maybe a wider clearance box. That top right picture shows a wildlife crossings. Um, one of ours out west that we've seen a, an uptick in, in design um, over the past several years. Or again, the bottom right showing some multi-cell configuration very much like your conspans. So the key takeaway with your precast system is modularity. A modular system allows for an entirely customized bridge, including your precast foundations, your precast arches, your precast headwalls, and your precast wing walls. And these can all be manufactured off-site while the site is being constructed and readied by the contractor. This allows for additional time savings in the overall project timeline. And the modular nature of these structures allows for even longer spans using twin leaf construction, as well as manufacturing the pieces to follow a curved alignment. As with plate, uh, there are several shape options that we design to address particular site challenges. All handle hydraulics very well. So whether you're looking at your conspan or your Bebo systems, there are three Bebo systems, two conspan systems. Again, depends on the application as to which system is gonna be the best option for your current project. This slide shows an overview of the span rise ratios of both the conspan and the Bebo systems. Um, they're precast, so they're very standardized in terms of the, the set span rise ratios. Um, there's a little bit of some flexibility in that, uh, but we've tried to hit all the span rise ratios starting at um, about 10 foot in clear span to again, um, just over 100 foot in clear span. So if, if the span isn't long enough because the rise can't get tall enough, uh, one option is to go with a multi-cell configuration. And there are multiple ways to do that depending on your site and your geometry, your hydraulics. Um, and that's where hopefully we can work together to figure out what is that best option. So these arch systems, these buried bridge systems, what we call soil interactive structures. The basic principle of soil structure interaction is how the soil reacts to the structure deflections as the structure is loaded to increase the total load carrying capacity of the system. An arch benefits from soil structure interaction. So as the, the arch is loaded, the top of the structure, top of the arch deflects downward, uh, but to allow that downward deflection, the legs have to move outward. When the legs move outward, the soil provides that resistance, that backfill provides that resistance. Uh, the more the legs move outward, the more the soil resists, increasing that structural capacity. And a system like this can be difficult to analyze by hand. Fortunately, there's some very powerful tools that can help us to do that. One of the tools is what we call CANDI, or Culvert Analysis and Design. This is a, a software development um, that was developed by FHWA back in the 70s. Um, it's gone through several revisions over the years, um, but this allows us to, to run a finite element analysis through these structures, through these buried bridge structures, our plate systems, some of our plate systems, as well as all of our precast systems. Trying to figure out what's the most efficient arch design for this specific site. So if that's a, a conspan, if that's a Bebo, if that's a bridge core, trying to figure out what is the most efficient structure to utilize. So this is an example of our O-series uh, being modeled in Candy, the culvert analysis design. Um, again, a finite element methodology um, that's based on a two-dimensional slice of the culvert um, so that both the structure and the soil mass are modeled as a combined soil structure system, and they're subjected to the incremental loading that's scheduled. 
And so in this model, you can see various colored boxes that represent the incremental loading applied to the structure during backfill. Um, the different colored number numbers represent the various soil materials that are being modeled, and the live load is moved across multiple load cases to produce controlling design. Here, this is an overlay of two moment diagrams that generated that were generated from a candy output. Um, the red is your three-sided flat top, um, shows large moments around the haunches and around the crown of the structure. And the blue is an output of your Conspan O-series, very minimal moments around the haunches and the crown. So since these moments are used to determine the stresses in the unit, one can see that um, in this overlay that there are where there are larger moments, there's a thicker unit that, that's needed um, to counteract those internal forces and stay within those limits that are dictated um, by the AASHTO design codes. So based on this overlay, um, it's, it's pretty clear that the structurally efficiencies of the shape of the conspan arch lead to a system that uses much less concrete and steel that support the same load as a rectangular shape with a three-sided flat top. And so here is a very similar example to that, your Conspan O-series in green, your three-sided flat top in red, shows very similar sizes, but shows you the difference in the thickness of both the legs, the walls, um, as well as the crown of it. So a thinner arch section has many benefits to the project in addition to great savings in, in quantities in concrete and reinforcing steel up to about 40%. Uh, the thinner section allows for longer lay links, meaning less trucks to the site, uh, less picks to install, potentially a smaller crane size as well. And all of these benefits add up to greatly increase the project savings and increase the installation speed. This was a project that the Textile Amarillo District had designed a couple of years ago. It was an off-system bridge project that they were looking at to replace an existing old wooden truss um, that was underrated. Um, it was low posted, and so they needed a bridge that would carry the capacity of an emergency vehicle. So meet, meeting the hydraulic requirements, the geometry of the site, as well as a low carrying capacity, um, the Conspan O-Series was selected with precast headwalls, precast wing walls, your standard tech stop railing, as well as some parapet, um, smaller retaining walls that stubbed out that were cast in place. But the key with this project was speed of installation. Our precast arches, headwalls, and wing walls were on site 7 a.m. on Tuesday. We were out of there 7 p.m. on Wednesday. So two full days of installation and the contractor was ready to grout and then begin the backfill process and, and continue moving on and be out of there so that the uh, residents could have access to their homes. So my hope is to answer the question of why a buried bridge? Why a buried bridge in this case versus a, a traditional bridge and grade? Well, when you're looking at this system, you have a traditional bridge, your concrete eye girder system on, on deep foundations, you got columns, bridge decks, approach slabs, and your, your goal here as a designer is to get traffic from one side to another. So in this case, you're utilizing a traditional bridge. Well, what if instead, um, again, you're needing to meet some sort of mass here in this, in this middle area, um, whether it's hydraulic mass or a grade separation, and so it's, it's cars or pedestrians. So what if instead you insert a, a three-sided structure, like a conspan, um, on a spread foundation, maybe a deep foundation, but really you can eliminate the need for a ton of foundation, um, eliminate the bridge decks, eliminate the, the approach slabs, and in the end what you're looking at is eliminating a whole bunch of maintenance, as well as the construction time and costs, lowering the initial costs, um, as well as the overall life cycle cost for the entire project. So this is a key example of that. This was a project out in West Virginia. They, they bid it as a light kind replacement of a steel girder system. Um, the contractor actually came in as a VE option um, for a precast arch bridge with the Bebo. This was a 54 foot span Bebo arch system. Um, they bid it as such. They, they won the project with the Bebo Arch System. So the reason for that was they were proposing to, to, to put in the structure, the foundation, the arches, and then part of the backfill 
um, before they even disrupted any traffic on top. So if you look, traffic disruption was cut down from two years to five months. But I think the key with this one is not just time, it's gonna be money. So you're looking at an overall cost savings of two and a half million dollars to go from a traditional bridge to a buried bridge. So the, the question of why a buried bridge? Well, it's because there's a ton of cost savings as well as time savings. And so then you look at the maintenance cost over the years, um, it's reducing that by taking the traditional bridge costs of deck replacements and deck overlays and, and bridge decks, approach slabs, to just your periodic asphalt replacements. So to aid in, in some of that answering the question of why a buried bridge, Jacobs had prepared uh, a document, a white paper for the FHWA. Uh, we had provided some support to them on the precast arch system, but they were comparing the precast arch system to your traditional concrete eye girder system. So here lists 10 advantages to your precast arch bridge systems. There are a few disadvantages that they listed, but they were looking for four categories on comparing these two systems. One is your constructability, the other is your, your maintenance, your cost, and then your aesthetics. So out of all four of those categories, Jacob said the precast arch bridge is a preferred bridge system over your concrete eye girder system. So why a buried bridge? Because of constructability, because of maintenance, because of cost, and because of aesthetics. So flipping gears now, um, we talked about buried bridge at length, um, and now I wanna touch briefly on the bridges at grade. Some of those options, if you're a bridge designer, you're very familiar with this. If you're a Texan and you drive, you're probably pretty familiar with these as well. So what does Contech have to offer? What are some of those additional options for bridges at grade? Um, one of the options for your traditional bridge is your truss bridge system, whether it's a pedestrian or vehicular. The Continental brand, the Steadfast brand have been around for a very long time. So on the pedestrian bridge side, uh, in DFW specifically, there are so many trail bridges because there's so many trails. We've seen a lot of um, activity outside, especially during the past six or seven months. Um, so we're seeing a lot of hike and bike trails. We've been seeing these over the past decade. Um, so we've tried to standardize the process on the design side as well as the manufacturing side to have more of a bridge off the shelf type bridge for some of these bridges that we've seen about 70, 80 percent of the time, different spans, different widths, um, but all the same style, all the same finish, typical concrete, maybe a wood deck option, a very off the shelf, plain vanilla type bridge. You're looking at more of a custom bridge. Um, again, this is, this is what we love and our designers love to do. Um, so this has allowed us to, to, again, span over 300 linear feet to look at cable stay bridges, to look at tight arch bridges, um, various paint options, different styles. So if you've got a, a vision for a bridge, your, your owner, your client has a vision for a bridge, draw it, let us see it. Let's see if we can actually get it done and get it designed and get it in the ground. So the other truss bridge option is your vehicular bridge. Um, so whether it's a signature bridge at the entrance of a residential development or you're spanning a wetland or you're in the backwoods and trying to just get across because that's all you need, uh, the truss bridge option is another option that's an all bolted truss bridge. I mentioned our, some acquisitions through the years. One of our most recent one is the Big R Bridge. Um, they brought to our portfolio the girder bridge, the steel girder bridge. And in this case, this is the modular roll girder bridge. Um, so extremely fast in installation, speeds up the installation process to a couple hours um, instead of days or weeks even uh, when you're looking at a bridge, a traditional bridge. Um, all of these bridge systems are efficient in terms of design. We look at quality fabrication, efficiency in transportation and installation, um, really looking at the prefabricated element and system as a whole.
So I want to transition now from those options to how do we kind of work together um, based on those options. Uh, I think the key with working together, um, whatever you're designing, um, whether that's a context structure or not, is your specifications. So I, I think I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but your specifications are extremely important. Um, so when we look at these specifications on the plate side, the precast side, the truss and girder side, um, we kind of look at the, the large umbrella, or the, I guess the top of the pyramid is TxDOT, is what's kind of governing these specifications. And so this is kind of a boilerplate that we look at um, to make sure that we are covering our bases, especially if we're looking at municipalities and DOTs, counties, um, and, and the bridge design. So our plate systems, our precast system, and our trust systems all have the approved TxDOT specifications. So we want to again, work with you guys on what's the, what's the best option for your bridge um, and work through those specifications with you. One of the key elements to any bridge design is your foundation. The bridge doesn't stand up without a foundation. So I want to talk a little bit ad nauseum of uh, what does that bridge foundation design look like? Um, how do we work together with this? Well, the very first and probably one of the most important elements is your geotechnical report. Um, this is something that oftentimes gets left off, especially when you're looking at some of the smaller berry bridges, um, but it's very, very critical for whether um, you as a designer are, are doing an in-house doing the structural design or we contact are doing that foundation design. Getting this information early um, provides the most efficient design. Uh, there are various factors and elements that we need and you need to be able to design that foundation efficient, efficiently and effectively. So the, the soil bearing capacity is extremely important. How um, they're, I guess, reporting what that bearing capacity is, whether it's LRFD or LFD, um, knowing where the, the bearing strat is supposed to be, and then having the geotech actually recommend a foundation type is very important. Um, sometimes they'll recommend a size as well. We can provide some of that information um, to help them determine that. Uh, but we want to work alongside you and alongside and partner with the geotechnical firm um, to help provide the best and most efficient foundation for this bridge system. So the question is, why? Why does that matter? Um, well, getting a boring 100 yards away um, isn't helpful. It's not, it's not going to help you design a foundation for a bridge. Having the most accurate geotechnical information leads to the most efficient footing design for your site. So here, see a free body diagram of some forces uh, under the footing of a conspan osier. And two important things to point out here. The first is that the reactions given from us for a particular arch are net reactions. This means that the reactions have already accounted for the forces above the bottom of the arch leg, including the passive pressures of the soil behind the arch leg. And the second thing to point out here is that there are larger horizontal reactions um, that cause the foundation to be offset away from the stream, which allows for much less disturbance of that stream bed. So what are some options for your footings? Uh, you have a shallow foundation or you have a deep foundation. Um, there might be some hybrid um, or maybe some intermediate foundation systems to consider. Um, but typically when we look at a buried bridge system, uh, we're looking at either a spread foundation or a deep foundation. One of the, the most innovative systems that we have um, with Contech is our, is our foundation system. This is a precast foundation, blends the speed of precast the economy of cast in place. It's a precast shell of a foundation. So what you're seeing is uh, your, your transverse and longitudinal bars already cast into the bridge. So we've cut out the need for, uh, for any welding, any tying, any forming for a contractor on the site uh, eliminates um, a lot of potential issues with dewatering as well. And projects using the express foundation are generally installed uh, using the times of hours and days rather than the weeks or months for the cast in place footing. The precast foundation can be utilized underneath our 
any of our buried bridge systems, the plate or precast, or even the truss or girder systems. One of the most innovative options that we have with our foundation systems is our steel express foundations. Um, very much like the precast foundation fabricated at a quality controlled manufacturing facility is our steel express foundation. Um, it's again, a shell of a steel foundation. Um, it's a form that we have tied rebar. Uh, we've formed the steel, we've formed the foundation already at the plant that ships with the bridge on that one truck, more than likely one truck, maybe two trucks, depending on how large the bridge is. Um, again, speeding up the installation process, allowing the contractor to prep the site, ready for the foundations, and once that's ready, ready to install the foundations um, that next day. Um, here you're seeing on the far left is your precast foundation with our plate system, our multi-plate system, arch system, and on the right is your steel express foundation with our aluminum box culvert uh, buried bridge system. And so this process is putting in your crushed rock bedding, as seen here, installing your foundation, as seen here, and then setting your arches, whether it's your, your plate system or your precast system on top of your, uh, on top of your foundation system, and then you have an infill process with infill concrete. Um, again, there's, there's no tying, there's no welding. Um, all you're doing is infilling that concrete, um, vibrating into the void spaces, and then you've locked in the arch system to the foundation system, providing a solid, complete system for your bridge. To reiterate that Contec is a complete site solution company, um, one thing that we've, we've been working through over the years, again, with acquisitions, uh, with internal uh, innovation, research and development is our wall systems. Um, some of the brands, again, you might be familiar with Keystone Retaining Walls, Vista Wall, um, the bin wall system. I'm gonna talk very briefly about these um, because these systems can be utilized in conjunction with our bridge systems, especially our buried bridge systems, or they can be utilized as independent wall systems. So the Keystone Retaining Wall, small modular block system, whether it's extensible or non-extensible reinforcements. Um, that top right picture shows in use with our Bebo arch system. And then the bottom right shows an independent wall system utilized uh, for soil stabilization. The Vista wall system, this was a uh, part of the acquisition with Big R um, and a precast MSC panel wall. The top right shows in use with our bridge core, or deep corrugation system. Um, and then the bottom right shows in use with a standard text dot concrete eye girder bridge. Uh, Vista wall, there's also the wire panel wall system, whether it's a temporary or permanent wall system. And again, either utilized with a, one of our buried bridge systems or independently as a retaining wall system in, um, in itself. Now, I would say the grandfather of all wall systems is your bin wall retaining wall system. It's a heavy gauge galvanized steel system um, that's utilized again, either with a bridge system, a buried bridge system, or as an independent wall system.
So when you're designing a, a bridge system, whether it's a buried bridge system, bridge of grade system, or really even a, a culvert system, um, scour needs to be considered. So doing scour analysis. Um, utilize HEC, HEC 18, HEC 23, your design guidelines. Um, we want to evaluate, and you as the, the designer can evaluate how much scour, how much potential scour you're going to see on the upstream and downstream side. And so what do you use for scour? Is it riprap? Is it concrete riprap? Is it stone riprap? Or maybe there's another option for that. Well, there are, um, and one of those is what we call Ajax. It's a high-stability concrete armor unit that's designed to interlock into a flexible, and highly permeable matrix. And the far left picture shows it in use with our uh, conspan bridge system as scour protection. Um, sometimes and oftentimes, it's actually utilized as bridge tier scour for an existing bridge system. Um, sometimes used as tow stabilization, outlet protection again for one of our bridge tier systems, our buried bridge systems. Uh, the other system, uh, which was developed back in the 1970s, um, is what we call ArmorFlex. It's an articulated concrete block mat system. Um, made of flexible matrix of concrete blocks with uniform size and shapes and weights um, that use for hard armor erosion control. And, and these ACDs, or the articulated concrete block systems, um, can be utilized again in, in conjunction with our barrier bridge systems, as seen in that far left picture, um, or with our truss bridge systems, seen here with scour protection around the abutments. Um, a lot of the time, and really how they were developed was for things like dam, and dams and spillways, um, and really the open, open channel lining um, is really where I see it most often in the DFW area. The key takeaway with hard armor solution is it's permanent. Um, allows for vegetation if you have an open cell system. I mean, it's extremely efficient in construction. When you look at the cable mat system, um, able to install somewhere in the range of four to 6,000 square feet in a day. Uh, but really, when you're looking at any of these systems, and I mentioned that specifications being so important. Um, these interlocking articulated concrete block systems, the ACBs, um, these specifications utilize your ASTM. Um, your ASTM standards drive the industry to the highest standard. Um, so when you're looking at the design, the testing, the methodologies of testing, and the um, extrapolation of that data, the ASTM standards are the highest in the industry. So making sure that those are there in the specifications are very important. So working alongside DOT um, on various projects utilizing the specifications. I want to end um, today with some national and local applications to again, if you have a project like this, um, to help you just creatively think through some of those innovations and maybe Maybe there's an option for you on your project right now. One of those projects was out in Massachusetts. Um, this was a very, very, very old structure. Um, this was installed uh, back in the late 1800s. Um, it was, became structurally deficient. Um, the swing span was jamming. Was unable to handle emergency vehicles, the commercial vehicles. Um, it had a posted weight limit of only three short tons um, towards the end of its life, but it had 6,000 cars daily on it. So, Massachusetts Highway Department began trying to figure out what to do with this um, back in the mid 70s. Um, so, a couple of decades later, um, they had determined that the Bebo Arc system. was the best option for them for this crossing was the Bebo Arch system. So they specified the Bebo Arch system. And they ended up with four total spans, uh, two at 92 feet, 92 feet, two at 74 feet, um, to allow for them to have um, the, the clearance that they needed also for the, the load rating that they needed for this crossing. In the end, 
We have a very aesthetically pleasing structure utilizing the Bebo Arch system. Another project out in the west, uh, Nevada DOT, was looking at uh, crossing and again getting traffic from one side to the other. They had an exit, an interchange. Uh, they were trying to get more so the, the large trucks from the loves from one side and one exit to, uh, to the other side to be able to, to switch directions. Um, you could have utilized the concrete aggregator system. This could have been design. Could have been a double span, a triple span. Uh, concrete aggregator system, system um, but they, they wanted, wanted some aesthetic, aesthetic flair to it. it. So, so there was an aesthetic appeal. So utilizing the NSC precast panel, panel wall system in conjunction with the Bebo Arc system for grade, grade separation, separation clearance box, box uh, provided the DOT with exactly what they wanted with an extremely efficient and construction system, system as well as with some cost savings overall uh, with construction as well as with material. So most everything that we're talking about is new construction. Um, but what I've seen lately, um, especially in Texas, is that there are a number of structurally deficient and fully obsolete bridge systems. And so um, replacing that is an option. Uh, replacing the bridge where it's an on or off system bridge is an option. Um, that might be a costly option. Though. So maybe considering either relining or rehabbing that system, that system. Um, as, as mentioned, mentioned with, with the West Virginia DOT, DOT in the bottom middle, middle picture, picture. Um, um, or utilizing minor, minor plate as an option as well, depending on the hydraulics, depending on the geometries, what, what fits, what doesn't, what doesn't fit. fit. Um, um, we want to work, work alongside the see is, is there a cost benefit, benefit to possibly relining that, that existing structure? structure. A couple of local applications I want to share with you as a Close. Uh, one, one down, down in Georgetown, Georgetown, I say local, local, local to Texas, Texas at least, uh, down in Georgetown. Georgetown. This was a um, Williamson County, County project, project. HMTB had uh, provided design. design. Uh, this, again, yeah. was, was designed, designed um, as, as a, a triple span, span textile beam structure. structure. Um, this actually, actually became value engineered, engineered utilizing a, a multi-plate system. system. Um, um, this, this is not your traditional, traditional bridge. bridge. This is a 28 and a half foot round multi-plate bridge, bridge system, structural, structural plate, plate system. system. So, so per FHWA, it's a bridge, it's, a bridge. Um, it's over 20 feet, uh, um, but it's, it's eliminated, eliminated the need for a foundation. foundation. It's eliminated it's the need for bridge deck to approach slabs. slabs. So, so it's eliminated most of, if not all, all the maintenance. Um, um, and then in the end, you've got, got traffic, traffic from one side to another, and in your grade separation, traffic underneath, which is your mass, um, utilizes a cast in place collar as well as uh, it's, it's harder to see in that right, right picture, picture, but it's a keystone, keystone modular block containing wall system. This was a project we worked alongside with Clarence County. County. This was an extension of widening of uh, Bonds Ranch Road, road. Uh, an extension of an existing structure that we had provided for Clarence County about 20 years ago. Uh, this, this was selected, selected the aluminum box or cobalt was selected in lieu of multi-cell barrels, multi-cell boxes, um, eliminating the, the pure blockage, potential pure blockage, the silt built up, um, and then the long-term maintenance for the county, as well as the immediate construction, initial construction costs for the county. Um, so have been doing a lot of work with Tarrant County lately because of the efficiencies in the structures, has a natural convert. So Three cells, just about 20, 21 foot in the clear span, and allows for a hydraulically efficient structure um, and allows for the county to save some money on this as well. Uh, this is a project, yes, it's a little bit dated, uh, but I think it just really speaks to the capabilities of the precast system. This was a Texas public, public work project of the year back in 2009. This was a multi-cell configuration for a constant bridge system on a fairly significant skew. Uh, when you when you look at this, uh, typically we see a single span, a con span, or a bridge system, a buried bridge system. Here you have seven cells. So again, hydraulics is important. So we want to make sure we meet the hydraulic capacity as well as the geometry. So. Potentially, you could have had a traditional bridge here, whether it's a double, triple, quadruple span, 
uh, concrete hard hardware system. system. But when you look, look at the efficiencies of construction, as well as the overall lifespan of, of the system, system uh, we designed for a 75 year design life per Ashto design, 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 design code. code. So, so we want to we want to consider not just the immediate costs, but also the overall cost savings uh, for whoever the client is. This was a unique application, application for our Consumer Bridge, bridge system. system. Uh, the North Haven Trail in Dallas County, County is through the Encore easements, uh, Encore right away. Uh, notice notice the, the high energy transmission shower on the far left. left. Um, um, Encore would not allow the steel prefab truss system in the right away. So we had to be innovative. We had to think about what are some other options to provide a crossing here where we need a large hydraulic capacity. Um, you could have done boxes, that was an option, uh, but that overtopped in the two year event. So trying to meet the entire hydraulic capacity here, uh, 100 year event was our constant O series, was a 57 foot span. It's only 16 linear feet, because that's all you needed for your trail. Uh, but, but it allowed, allowed for um, um, energy, energy shutdown, shutdown for uh, the transmission lines, lines and installing the installing precast system without any arcing, without Encore uh, having to, to, to be concerned with any arcing in the, the, the right of way um, with a steel, steel system. system. This last, last project, project is a project uh, with TxDOT that was designed a few years ago over I-35. Uh, UNT has their football stadium. They needed connectivity um, from one side of 35 to another. Um, so rather than going to um, a smaller crossing and, and having some safety factors and safety risks to consider, um, they had designed a pedestrian bridge, a very large pedestrian bridge, mind you, 354 linear feet, um, 20 foot wide. Um, and they utilized a really interesting canopy system as well, um, but provided a safe passage for all of their the fans, their students, um, and then adults alike. I want to close with just a couple of resources for you. And how do we work together? How do, how do me as a bridge consultant and you as a designer work together on a project? And so maybe we've done some work before in the past. Uh, maybe it's been a few years. Maybe we've never met. But how do we work together on project and how do you design for maybe you have a, an application use for these very good systems or one of our prefab trust systems so how do you do it um, well one resource and tool to you is what we call our DYOB it's a design your own bridge this is a, a free tool on our website contact um, you click on here you register on the website it takes about 10 maybe 15 minutes uh, to input some of your parameters on your uh, on your bridge, and it kicks out some fairly high-level drawings. Shown here um, is a precast option. This is our plate system, and then we also have our truss system available as well. So depending on your project, um, you can get some fairly high-level drawings. Yes, you should put them in your bid set. Um, ideally, um, you are doing the DYOB, it'll kick me an email, I'll follow up with you so we can actually figure out what's the best option for this process. Is it precast? Is it plate? Um, and what's that shape? Is that shape going to be the most efficient? Should draw them geometrically? What about the foundation system? Should we go prefab? Should we go precast? Maybe steel? So all of those things are, are part of what we're looking at in this solution development stage. Um, we can also get into the nitty gritty, doing the design details, doing the contract drawings. I mentioned we have PEs on staff. Um, so if it's for a bid set or if it's doing the shop drawings for um, for one of our constant here in this case, constant O series bridge systems, we have those resources in house to be able to do that. Um, I mentioned foundations, and this is kind of an either or, whether you as a designer have structural on board in-house or as part of your team doing the foundation design and providing the reactions and some details for that foundation um, or something that Contech does in-house. I mentioned we have those PEs on staff, so we can do that design uh, if we need to for the foundation. 
Another resource is, is me. Um, hopefully through this, this seminar, you guys have learned that there's, there's a resource locally that I can provide to you guys. It's, it's me, whether that's doing something like this, whether that's meeting in person, or I guess in this case, it's virtually these days. Um, we want to attend pre-big meetings, hold pre-construction meetings, but we're also there during the installation. So precast, plate, trust, order systems, whatever it is, we want to be there on site to support the customer, the, the contractor, um, the owner, the clients, you, the designer, trying to figure out, making sure that everything is installed properly according to design and according to specifications. Um, so in closing, again, thank you guys for your time. I appreciate um, you guys participating. We want to partner with you as best as we can. Um, there are barrier bridge systems, our trust reserve systems, any of our, our complementary systems, our hard armor solutions, our prefabricated foundation systems. And so how do we do that? Um, one is just meeting together, is whether that's virtually, going more in depth through your project, through your specific project, um, doing various presentations for your uh, or seminars for your, uh, your firm. Um, and then and obviously, obviously your design tools, tools so, so some DYOB, some structural plate design guide, guide. Um, um, and then providing some estimates for you. So that's you know, always, always a big question is, how much does it cost? Um, well, well, if you ask this question, you've got my email address, address right, right there at the bottom, bottom as well as my phone, phone number. Feel, feel free to pick up the phone, phone give me a call, um, and ask those kinds of questions. So again, thank you for participating in today's seminar. Uh, at the bottom of my contact information, look forward to meeting you hopefully in person, if not virtually these days, and working together on a project with you.